Hello and welcome back to this channel called Beans on the Lines, which is about books, reading, literature, writing, translation. And in this particular episode, I thought we'd be talking a bit about a poem by Hendrik Ibsen. It's a poem about dancing bears. And the reason why I remember that particular poem was that Jonathan Sklar was writing a text, and in it, there's a passage about dancing bears, which we'll return to. And I thought now, in particular, now that it's Christmas, because it's really a poem about trauma, and Christmas is a tra traumatic time for many people. And I thought it might be good to, to, to mention that because of the absence of people that should have been there or the presence of people who are horrible, bad family constellations. And also I thought in these, with these peculiar times with COVID and the year is 2020, I think the theme of sort of being captured, being trapped might resonate with many people. So I found, I remember the poem from my childhood and it's, I think most of Ibsen's poems aren't really worth remembering, but a few of them are, and this is one of the few. And then I later came across now a translation into English. So I'll just read you first the Norwegian version and then the English translated version. Minnets makt. Hør vi et i hvordan en dyret hemmer, får lært sin bjørn hva den aldri glemmer. I en bryggekjedel han begynner dyret, så blir det tett under kjedelen fyret. I midlertid han på positive spiller på bansen, fry deg ved livet. Av smerte kan knapt den lodne sanse, han kan ikke stå, og så må han danse. Og spiller siden den melodi han, flyks farer en dansende djevel i han. Jeg selv satt en gang i kjedelen nede, under full musikk og forsvarligheten. Og den gang brente jeg mer enn skinnet, og det går aldri meg ut av minne. Og hver gang gjenklang fra den tiden lyder, det er som jeg bantes i glodende gryter. Det kjennes som stikk under neilerøtter, da må jeg danse på bæsjeføtter. Her er det engelsk versjon, translasjon. The power of memory. Hi, do you know if a trainer is clever how he teaches his bear something that sticks forever? He binds the beast in the brewer's hopper, then starts a fire beneath the copper. His hurdy-gurdy starts grinding a hurdy. Tune out for Brun lies one long party. The beast soon senses a pain that's lancing. He can't stand still, so he must start dancing. And if the melody is played again, a demon of dawn starts to drive him insane. I found myself once in the copper seated, with music full blast, fire equally heated. I burned more than hide on that occasion. The memory sticks, it defies erasion. And each time that distant memory is called on, I feel like a bound in a red hot cauldron. It feels like one's quick when the sharp thorns in it. I have to dance with my birth foot that minute. Dancing Bears, Implications for a New Beginning. Bulgaria established a sanctuary for bears rescued from captivity from circuses, performing in towns and hamlets since the 1990s when the end of communism gave rise to hope that bears might enjoy freedom too. Young bears have for centuries been taken from their mothers in the wild, domesticated by keepers, by attaching chains to rings driven through their noses, beating them and knocking their teeth out as a means of training them to dance. They performed tricks, imitated celebrities and with claws trimmed, gave back massages as entertainment. Worse was forcing the bears to follow human customs living with their keepers on a diet of bread and alcohol and working all year round 
without winter hibernation. They forgot how to hibernate, to hunt, to attract a mate, or to move freely with their limbs chained and pulled to cause them to seem to dance. This is described in Dancing Bears, true stories of people nostalgic for a life under tyranny. Some stories emerge. Some keepers, not noticing they'd done anything wrong, badly miss their confiscated bears that they thought they loved. How were the bears retrained, understanding that freedom has to come gradually? First, their nose rings were removed. In a special section of the park, fenced off, they gradually became accustomed to the smell of other bears, yet without eating together. Later, they roamed within the large fenced off area in the hope that there would be a return of natural instincts, hunting, mating, and hibernating. Yet it was only a semblance of freedom as the bears could not survive. Either they die of cold, incapable of finding a place to hibernate, or the first male whose territory they entered would kill them. Or they'd look for food in trash cans and someone would shoot them. Some were so infected with the prisoner mentality that for years, they would start to dance when they saw a human being. They would stand up on their hind legs and start rocking from side to side, as if they were begging, as in the past, for bread, candy, a sip of beer, a caress, or to be free of pain. My interest is examining the powerful descriptions of the chained bears, cruelly forced against their nature to identify with their aggressors, and putting on a show of obedience in return for scraps. As the psychotic Anlazan realizes that the prison door of their inner life no longer is barred shut, it does not mean that the cell is left. This can be perplexing for the analyst, yet why should one get better in case the perpetrators will be delighted and might suggest that there had never been any capture? or the more obvious staying in the masochistic identification formed through multitudinous cruel practices and the continuation of deep fear. So I reiterate such states of mind which contain paradoxes. Quote, at the start is an essential aloneness. At the same time, this aloneness can only take place under maximum conditions of dependence. Winnicott, 1988. The quest for a new beginning in those who suffered severely is, like with the dancing bears, an arduous procedure. The terrible difficulty of the adult realizing that great cruelty has been done to him or her in childhood is that it can be uh, understood. People can learn about their origins, but like the dancing bears, you know, the regime can say, you're now free. You don't have to be kept uh, in chains. And yet, like the poor dancing bears given their freedom, they had forgotten how to live their lives, or in the case of children, um, they wouldn't know how they might live their lives in a free way. So that the work on not just rehabilitation, but habilitation is particularly arduous to help that quite large group of patients not just be free in their minds, but be free to push open the unlocked gate of their cell and to get out and enjoy being in the world in a state of freedom and authenticity in a new life.